most important journey of our lives does not necessarily involve climbing the highest peak or trekking around the world. The biggest adventure you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. Today we have with us the glamorous Ms. Ruchika Mehta, editor, Femina and Hello Magazine to talk about women and dreams. She has been a leading lifestyle journalist for over 20 years now. Ms. Ruchika Mehta is the driving force behind Femina and Hello Magazine and has made them the leading magazines of India today. Let's hear it from Ms. Ruchika Mehta on Women and Dreams. Namaskar Tai Hubli. I'm Ruchika Mehta and I'm the editor of Femina Magazine. I'm absolutely honored and privileged to be here today to be addressing such an enthusiastic and evolved audience. Uh, when I was approached to be a part of this very, very esteemed uh, Pa panel and esteemed uh, lot of speakers, I was a bit humbled and I was a bit uh, even uh, nervous to say, do I really deserve this platform? Have I really done something that I need to be here? But it's not about what you've achieved and who you are, but it's also about what you have to share. I do have a story to tell. It may not be every girl's story, but there is a little bit of story which you may enjoy. Uh, and my story typically is a small town girl story who reached a big town like Bombay with dreams in her eyes, but not the Bollywood dreams. I They were not the Bollywood dreams, which everybody lands up in uh, Bombay with, but there were little dreams to say that I can do something and why am I not doing it? So my story started in a small town called Karnal. It's a little hamlet in uh, Haryana, but it's a kind of literate uh, city. My father was an executive engineer with the Haryana government. We were two sisters. And I think uh, there was that one inkling my father always had that, uh, which is what I owe everything to him for, that I have given birth to two boys and not two girls. Now, that is what we've been brought up with. That is what we were always told that you may have taken birth as girls, but you're no less than boys. We never forgot that. Our parents never let us forget that. There was nothing a boy could do and which we wanted to do and we were not able to do or we were not allowed to do. My father was smart enough to figure out that maybe if I give my girls a little more exposure, send them to boarding schools, they will, be, they will come out at something more. And I think that was the breaking point in my life. That really was what made all the difference to where I am. Uh, I was shipped off to a fabulous school called Wellam Girls High School in Dehradun. Um, we build, uh, we kind of. I grew up with um, a very, very um, uh, ha hoity-toity lot of people and girls from all over India, from the royalties to the rich and famous. Everybody was there. But one thing what the school taught me, and which is a lesson which I still remember and still absorb in every single moment of my life, is that you may be who you are. You may come from wherever you think you have come. But when you come to school and you all dress in the same uniform, you are one. There is no difference in the girl standing next to you or the girl standing on your left or your girl standing on your right. You are all in the same uniform, on the same premises, with the same food and the same teachers and the same education. That was a very, very, very humbling experience for us. That is something what taught me that, you know, when you wear the same shade of clothes, you are no different from anybody else. And that is what made all the difference to me to say that I am no different from the girl. Probably she may be from the royal family of Patiala, who was my batchmate, or she may be uh, Mrs. Gandhi's granddaughter. Priyanka was also a part of our school. Priyanka Gandhi was also in a school. But I am also eating the same food she is. I'm also getting the same uh, obvious preferences and uh, opportunities that she is. So I am no less. 
as a little girl when i went to school i never let my for self forget that and i think it is that little bit of uh, self confidence which came from there that i kind of instilled and honed in me and that is where i did come along my parents were a very simple lot of people they were absolutely simple small time for a uh, small town sorry pa beg your pardon small town folks my mother especially was anything but worldly wise my dad would worry and he would say listen i'm bringing you up as girls and boys but you will have to look after your mother she is some she is not worldly wise and uh girls are normally brought up by their moms for us most of our upbringing was done by our father and uh, unfortunately uh, when we were still on the threshold of stepping out in life i lost my father i was in my first year of college uh, i was just 18 yet to turn 19 and uh, i lost my father to a deadly at that point of time deadly disease called encephalitis i couldn't even see him before he departed so that thing left a very big vacuum in me i i really thought i'm headless today he guided me and every moment of my life what am i going to do uh, that was a big 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 jolt it, it in my life but uh, i would still every time i got up in the morning and i looked at my father's face in the picture and i do remember him saying that listen you may have taken birth as girls but you are still boys and that boy in me came up and said i am not going to let my father down at any point of time i'm going to do something make him proud i was in first year of college i went to a fabulous again another fabulous uh, college called st beats college in simla another boarding college that was i don't know whether will you will you say it's a good thing or a bad thing but we went to a boarding school girls boarding school and i proceeded to go to a girls boarding college so there was really no exposure to the real dirty world of delhi and boys and this and that it was a very sheltered life a saint beats college was a convent uh, we had lots of nuns around us we were very regimented and uh, here i had dreams in my eyes to say listen i want to be this 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 in my life and everybody say but listen you're in your third year of college and you're still you know uh, uh, going to bed at 9:30 at night as the nuns are asking you to do what do you think you're going to do in life so i don't know whether there was a good thing or a bad thing that we didn't get the exposure that most girls in our day and age were getting it uh, and i would like how am i going to go out and do it but there was something in me which uh, said i can do it journalism now where did the seed of journalism come in me from when i was in school just out of chance i was i kind of stepped in for somebody to be a part of um, the editing team of the school magazine when we were in class 12 in dehradun and uh, that was my first brush with journalism i kind of uh, was helping in rather i was filling in for somebody in doing it and i managed to do a fairly good job the the teacher was very happy and she says ruchika why don't you come on permanently on the team and it's great because i do like your inputs what i like about you is that you gave very catchy headlines to this little little topic so you do have that little chutzpa about you to give headlines i want you on the team and i'm like oops but that is not what i want to do and that is not how i'm not so strong on that she said no no come on come on that was my first brush with journalism i started enjoying what i did and i did realize that yeah i'm quite sharp at giving headlines i would alliterate very smartly i would get the right adjectives and i realized that my vocabulary is not that bad i uh, was always wanting to do advertising when i left school and i wanted to get into college advertising was the very uh, hip thing at that point of time advertising agencies were cool all the youngsters used to go there they would hang around together the bars and the pop culture was just taking off and that was really the cool thing at that time so we all only wanted to do that now when i went to college i again kind of uh, offered to be part of the college editorial team also taking out the monthly magazine and i uh, kind of uh, 
it started excelling at it and i became the editor of the school magazine also at that point of time now still still journalism was not something i ever thought of pursuing like every cool girl wanting to be in the advertising agency i wanted to do that too i believe me i graduated from college and i went on to do a course in advertising and marketing and i did very well i kind of uh, gave very catchy lines even in advertising when i had to give slogans and we had assignments i was even doing that very well so but but i still wanted to go into the client servicing side and not on the writing side of it i graduated i did a course in journalism sorry uh, beg your pardon i did a course in advertising and on a stroke of luck a friend of mine was over for coffee in my house and she says i am going to enroll myself self for this course of journalism would you like to do that and i'm like journalism are we uh, no no but i'm going to do advertising she says okay it's an evening course it's a good course it's one of the good courses if you're lucky enough to get through let's just do it we applied she didn't get through i did and lo and behold i was enrolled in a journalism course and next i knew i am full fledged learning journalism uh i started enjoying that it was an evening course uh in the day i uh, joined an advertising agency i did not let that passion die i did not let that um, uh, interest of advertising die in me an evening i used to go for my journalism courses when that year got over uh i was pretty um, set in my advertising agency crayons was the agency i worked with in delhi and uh, the the journalism came a course came to an end i um, happened to meet the editor of india today at that point of time shekhar gupta mr shekhar gupta at somebody's house and he was really the thing at that time shekhar gupta one was the sorry was one of the most revered uh, journalists at that time and editors and he says listen um, what are you doing these days and you're a young smart bright kid so i said i've just finished a course in journalism he says okay we're looking at some interns in india today why don't you come and meet me i was there in his office next day and after two days i was a part of the india today i i joined india today and that's where my journey journey with journalism started my first stop was india today i interned there for a bit and was fortunate enough to be picked up by the hindustan times soon after when i entered hindustan times it was still a very traditional setup uh, when i met the lot of people out there they were much older in age they were more they were far more traditional journalists they, uh, per se and i uh, the first week in hindustan times i said i cannot survive this you know i don't think i want to do this this is not what i'm cut out to be i don't want to be in a newspaper i want to do cooler things and i said i'm not going to fit in here uh, what am i trying to do i'm going back to my advertising agency and that is it and i still remember uh, i was in an elevator coming down uh, at the end of my day at work and uh, the owner of hindustan times mrs shobhna bhartia was waiting to get into the elevator to go up to her office and she bumped him to me and she says how are you doing ruchika have you settled in here at met her before somewhere so i said uh, as much as i love your paper ma'am i don't think i'm cut out for this she says why what happened i said you know i i'm not being able to fit into the culture and this is not what i want to do so she says come and have a chat with me in my office tomorrow uh when we both sat and chatted she says what would you like to do i said you know uh I want to bring in a little more youthfulness in the newspaper. I want to bring in a little more lifestyle in the newspaper and why don't we kind of be little more progressive that is not going to touch your news part of it. Why can't we do something cooler and more progressive? And she says okay, uh, what do you have in mind? Come to me with a plan. I put a plan together to say why don't we start a lifestyle column in the Sunday Hindustan Times and uh, i was absolutely new just not even probably 3 months into internship with india today only and she trusted me with the lifestyle section in the main paper which was the sunday paper of hindustan times that was my brush with luck that was my stroke of luck i was always fashion savvy i was always 
up to, I mean I was always keep up with what is happening with trends and fashion and beauty across the world in my international magazines and international uh, the websites there weren't those many at that point of time but the few that there were but I was always interested in reading on magazines and I would spend all my pocket money trying to buy international magazines so that is how lifestyle in journalism was my start and that is how we introduced lifestyle into Hindustan Times. It was very, very successful and I was soon given a column called Glitterati, uh, which, absolutely, which actually went on to become India's first page three column. You know, page three is something which everybody used to be talking about, say about five, 10 years ago. Oh, she's on page three, she's a page three girl, she's page three this. Let me tell you the story of page three. This is one of my deepest, uh, darker secrets which I've never kind of so openly said to everybody but today on this forum I am going to. I was I started a column called Glitterati in uh, one of the supplements of a weekly supplement at the Hindustan Times. It was a wrap up of people's placing and all the buzzing things that happened in Delhi at that point of time. The column became hugely popular everybody wanted to be featured in it we would put nice pictures of people places fashion shows uh, happenings, embassy events, all the roundup. And that column used to be on the page three right hand side, to, right on top of a page three right hand side of the newspaper. And that is exactly how page three became column. Glitterati became popular. And along with that, oh, the pa Glitterati on page three. Have you read about the Glitterati on page three? Were you featured in the Glitterati on page three? And that's how page three started. From a weekly column, I became a bi-weekly. From a bi-weekly, I became a daily column. And that is when my, my brush with people and hardcore lifestyle started. I then, while at HD, I went on to launch HD Siri. It was again a weekly supplement which went on to become bi-weekly and went on to become daily. That was one of my biggest accomplishments when I was with the Hindustan Times. While I was still there, I uh, got a Chevening scholarship and I went off to England to specialize in lifestyle journalism. And I uh, went to Westminster College and I studied uh, exclusive lifestyle journalism. That was a very, very specialized feat, which was only happening in the West. There was nothing called lifestyle journalism in India. I went and specialized. I went on to work with a Condé Nast Vogue magazine. I interned with them in London. And I came back. I came back to join the Times of India. That was way back in 2000. That was way back in 2000. I joined Times of India, continued my lifestyle journalism. I joined them as a lifestyle editor for Times Internet and the main paper, introduced various things, um, slid up on the ladder with lifestyle. I was very proud to be one of the first pioneers of lifestyle journalism in India. And many things came my way, many achievements, many accolades. I launched many supplements with the Hindustan Times. And then magazines happened to me. Uh, Times of India had a magazine division. And at that point of time, they only had Feminine Filmfare, which are one of the oldest brands for the Times of India group. And they tied up with BBC to launch Worldwide Media, which was a 50-50 joint venture between Times of India and BBC magazines to launch magazines. So the feminine filmfare moved to worldwide media and I soon launched Hello Magazine, which was the world's largest celebrity magazine. Celebrities had suddenly become very, very celebrity. The word celebrity had become very, very popular. It was a very chic word, a very happening word and a very trendy word to use. Oh, she's a celebrity. Have you checked out that celeb celebrity? Hello was India's first celebrity magazine. And when we, I do remember when I went to um, Spain, it's a Spanish brand, Ola, but it's Hello in all other parts of the world. I When I went to sign up for Hello, in Spain, uh, they said, so we are going to launch a weekly. I said, weekly with celebrities. In India, our, only, our, our celebrities are only limited to either Bollywood or cricket stars. And there is no glamour in the cricket stars. I'm talking about 2006. The only glamour that comes with is a handful of Bollywood stars. And how will I take out a weekly there? 
there was no culture of a paparazzi you know paparazzi culture which is what hello world over and all the other celebrity magazines thrive on there was no culture of paparazzi in india we had regular photographers there was nothing called paparazzi i said this won't work so the deal was almost off they said if it doesn't work it doesn't work then i said why don't we give it a shot and i make it a monthly celebrity lifestyle magazine they said what do you mean by that i said why don't i do the lifestyles of the rich and famous we go to their homes we shoot them we shoot the children we bring the glamour and the grandeur and we do something like that they trusted me with that and that was also hello's first experiment with a monthly magazine hello is a 75 year old brand and it's always been a weekly and in 2007 when we launched we were their first experiment on being a monthly lifestyle magazine hello within a period of less than 1 year was everywhere we were on a roll we i mean suddenly everybody wanted to be a part of hello i still remember we were the first magazine and i did the first first ever interview with the ambanis in their home and we were the first ones to feature antela nobody had seen antela we gave a glimpse into antela we were the first ones to feature neeta ambani in her clothes and jewelry we were the first ones to feature akash ambani in his and showing him as the heir of the ambani group so we brought a lot of glitz and glamour along the way last year femina happened to me femina is a part of the same group now it is every every lady editor's dream to kind of at some point of time uh, be at the hem of india's largest and most popular women's magazine femina i was fortunate enough to get that as well in my lap femina happened and i'm like oh my god am i counting my blessings thank you god i really that is it i mean i won't ever ask for anything else in my career i've done one of the best international magazines and now i'm doing one of the best indian magazines and femina happened so there i am sitting in front of you as the editor of femina but let me tell you something what drove me from being a small town girl in karnal to being the editor of femina when i look back i would say it was it was all about uh two things i remembered in my life that i am no less than a boy which my father had told me and the other thing was fearlessness you know i did always dare to try i was a very daring girl i always dared i said so what let me try if it doesn't work it doesn't work let me try i dared it was fearlessness and i kept telling myself no guts no glory you have the guts to go and do something you will get the glory glory will follow no guts no glory i never forgot uh, i had the passion i had the hard work i had my Uh, trials and tribulations i had my strifes i had my agonies and ecstasies i had my personal problems today i sit in front of you as a single mom of a 10 year old I, i mean i'm a 12 year old boy i've been looking after my house i've been looking after my child i've been looking after everything i only have one son it's not been an easy journey but it's been an extremely fulfilling journey I've had my share of tribulations like I said I've had my strifes it hasn't been an easy journey it's been a fabulous journey it's been a fulfilling journey but it hasn't been an easy journey uh, they have been my uh, strifes I, they have been my trials and tribulations I have my own moments uh, I have fought I have stumbled I have fallen but I've got up and stood and like I said I think that one thing that stood me by again and and again and again which pulled me up and said keep going girl keep going girl was fearlessness and the desire i always had this very burning desire on me to never never lose i didn't want to be uh, defeated in anything i didn't want to lose so if i started a job i wanted to complete it and i wanted to excel in it and uh, challenges is something that keeps me going if you don't challenge me i stagnate that is something i keep telling myself keep challenging yourself and uh, while hello and femina are two ends of the same spectrum they are absolutely two different ends 
that is all about glitz and glamour this is all about reality and being grounded so at the same point of time in my same head i'm uh, juggling one and then i come back to do to the uh, do the other so uh, i mean there is a sense of uh, uh, achievement in both today uh, femina of course is a matter of honor and pride and a great great privilege is what i've learned from femina by uh, when i do stories of these inspiring women the successful women these enterprising and inspirational women it it really kind of uh, again and again and again wakes up the woman in me also that look at that there is so much more you still have to do there's so much more you still have to achieve so uh, i mean all i have to say to all those young girls out there who dream who have dreams in their eyes could be any kind of dreams you must go for it go for it but do remember fearlessness is something that you will have to go with don't be scared to experiment don't be scared to uh, dare don't dare to if you can dare to dream then you dare, dare to go and achieve your dream also go try out whatever you think is there walk the uncharted course walk the territory that has never been wa- walked again but humility humility is something you need to uh, remember that if you are not humble you are nobody that is something uh, i can say it with great pride that i always kept my high, head my eyes low and my head high that is something i always learned while i used to walk my eyes were i used to look down but my head was always high high and i do remember uh, when i uh, another little secret that i will let out to you is that when i started i launched hello and i started working with hello and you were brushing shoulders with all the rich and the famous the industrialists and the bollywood stars who were on your phone call who would pick up the phone and chat with you uh, i just told myself remember one thing you are writing about those people you are not one of those the day you forget that you're one of the day you forget who you are and the day you start thinking you're one of them you you won't be who you are anymore and your downfall starts so every time i am in very hello presence with either the industrial age or bollywood stars or even hollywood stars i tell myself okay calm down you're only here to cover them as an editor you're not one of them so don't forget who you are and that's what i'll tell each one of you don't forget who you are at the end of the day all these all these halo things all these uh, luxuries of life will come and go but they only come and go when you again keep your eyes down and head high so don't forget and humility has been one of my biggest strengths which i've held on to and never let myself forget who i am and where i came from and that i'll never let myself forget my roots in karnal and my parents and my father's blessings and my simple mom who i still look after back in delhi who i i who probably has taught me that humility and simplicity is everything and i think as an editor the other thing i would say whoever ever who does know the media world is that uh, it's important as you go around in life to build relationships you build relationships on the not on the basis of the power of your chair you build relationships on the basis of your strengths on relating with them you may have covered somebody today it could be an amit mr amitabh bachchan or it could be another or mr ambani but that is only because of you being an editor but the relationship you may strike with these people is not only the interview you do it is all also how you relate with you that is also what i kind of have adapted very beautifully i'm very proud of the relationships that i've built over here today while i may have met so many people along the way out from work but they all friends away from work also today so humility fearlessness daring honesty and integrity anybody can achieve anything they want i'm just a small editor of a big magazine i'm here today gone tomorrow anybody can come and kind of replace it if you have all these qualities to with you today so that is my little story of a little girl from a small town who was thrown into the big world and i swam and i i survived thank you ms ruchika mehta for this beautiful talk and for making us believe in our dreams we have couple of questions for you 
As the editor of India's first and largest read women's English magazine, can you tell us how you are contributing towards the cause of women empowerment? Femina is one of India's largest and the oldest magazine. We have a legacy of over six decades. We are almost 61 years old and have been the women, woman's best friend. We are the woman's voice and we are the hand that every woman wants to hold. Femina has always stood up for women's right and championed women's rights. So if there is any issue, it is Femina which takes up. We are the ones who bring to you all the inspiring stories. We are the ones who connect to the women who matter. So we add to women's empowerments. We have taken up so many issues and campaigns like a recent one was an act against abuse when domestic violence had gone up a lot during the lockdown. We we uh, launched this huge campaign where we provided a platform to a lot of distressed women who were victims of domestic violence to come out and reach out to us and we gave them help with lawyers, with psychologists and with police. So uh, I think Femina is the only magazine that kind of uh, is uh, synonymous, synonymous and synchronizes with women empowerment. We do everything within our power to support women who deserve to be featured and spoken about. Here is our next question. Can you share with us some inspiring stories of women entrepreneurs who have left a mark on you? I think uh, one of, uh, uh, I'm, I'm hugely inspired by Indira Nui. You know, she, uh, I mean, she's again a, a woman from South India who went on to become the head of Pepsi, which is one of uh, the world's largest organizations. Now, the reason why she always inspires me is this. Uh, I, I heard a TEDx talk with her where uh, she once, this was many, many, many years ago when she was narrating a story about how when she was chosen to become the CEO of um, at Pepsi, she came home and she jumped with joy. She got late because they were running into a board meeting, a, a big meeting that evening and she got very late when she came back home. And she came home running with joy to her mom and said her husband, children, everybody there, mom, guess what? I'm going to become the CEO of uh, Pepsi. And uh, she said her mother didn't react. She just stood uh, stone faced and she says, do you know there's no milk in the house? Just get into your car and go and get the milk. And I'm like, oh my God, reality hit me at that point of time saying life isn't about only being a CEO. It's also about kids and kitchen. You, you cannot forget that kids and kitchen are your primary responsibility. So how she has managed her personal life, her children, her husband and such a high profile job. I have always very closely followed the story of Indira Nui and she is one woman who really inspires me that how she's managed such a strong position while he, you know, managing two girls at home. She had two growing up girls at home on her husband. Of course, it doesn't happen without the support of your family members and especially your partner could yeah, be your husband or anybody at home. But what, what she didn't forget is that she had to sit into the car that day, go to the grocery, pick up milk and come back home, even though she was already appointed the CEO of Pepsi. And that is what I also always want to remember. You may be whoever you are, but there's still kids in kitchen as a woman that you have to come back home to. Our next question for you is, what do you as a woman entrepreneur like to tell other women aspiring? Uh, I only say two things about to everybody else. Be gutsy. There is no guts. There is no glory. Be fearless. Believe in yourself. Be fearless. If you think you're right, you think you deserve to be where, what you want to do, be fearless. Go after your dreams. And third, believe in yourself. Uh, be be courageous take the responsibility of your actions don't don't cow down if there is if you have the guts if you have the fearlessness and you have the uh, gumption and conviction you will achieve everything you want to what are the key traits that are pivotal for discovering oneself especially for progressive women seeking to establish themselves as entrepreneurs uh I think the first thing is to uh, believe in yourself and don't ever think you're any less than anybody else. The moment you feel that you're less than a man or anybody who's a little more privileged, 
uh, you'll never be able to uh, stand up on your own don't think you're any less than anybody else uh, everybody does some people may get better opportunities but you can also you may have something else you may have the skill and you may have the conviction which somebody else may not have so don't give up don't let yourself uh, down or uh, compromise on your ethics and integrity and don't ever let yourself think that you're less than anybody else and go go after what you believe uh, there is uh, this is a huge uh, there is space for everybody under the sky and everybody will get their moment of glory everybody will get their uh, moment under the sun so hope for that believe in that and go for that so thank you very much once again Ty for giving me this honor and privilege of sharing my story I still don't think I really deserve this platform right now. I have so much more to achieve. I have so many more miles to walk. Like we said before, like Robert Frost said before I sleep, I have so many miles to watch. But uh, keep daring, keep dreaming, keep going ahead and don't miss the woods for the jungle. There's a whole big life ahead and you have a lot to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ty. And I'm looking forward to meeting you there. Thank you and Namaskar.